hey it's Shilpa here welcome to this tutorial so today I'm going to actually talk about one key request I get from my members and as everyone knows you know I've created a bonding house and mastering the bonding house and repertory course with about eight or nine weeks of tutorials where we go and solve different types of cases you you know bonding house and cases using his approach and um, learn that method and learn the way his repertory works and interestingly when i look at the feedback forms you know a lot of people have asked me well you've done something on the bonding house and how about doing something on the kenton approach and kenton approach is something you know everyone learns at school and they've been trained right from the grassroots so um, i thought you know it wasn't worth making a course on that and obviously because I love the Bonninghausen approach and I've um, cut my teeth on it so I just thought that was a much more interesting one and I use it day and out however I thought uh, I've made a repertorization course called Mastering Repertorization where I've used about 10 or 12 different approaches by different authors um, you know Kenton, Bonninghausen, Bojers um, you know, Nash, Nair, keynote symptoms, um, pathological rubrics, and so on and so forth. So check that out if you want to learn different approaches. And Kenton approach is also covered in that course. However, today I want to just focus on Kenton approach and give you sort of you know um, an understanding of how that approach works. How is it a bit different than the burning house approach, but nevertheless absolutely essential to know and learn and you need to be able to work your cases depending on how the case is using both approaches so I've chosen today a case by Kent and um, he sort of um, described the case and just given the prescription in one of his clinical cases so what I thought is I'll show you how you come analyze the case and come to the prescription um, using his method all right so we have this woman, uh, 23 year old, a young lady. She had multiple ulcers on the left leg, uh, which began three years ago. That's when she approached Kent. Um, it was a brown crust surrounded by very dark copper colored skin, but there was no history of syphilis, no hair loss, no sore throat. So it was, you know, there was no diagnosis as such. She had tapeworm um, six or seven, eight years ago, cured by strong drugs. Um, she has dry cough, desires for cold, as well as warm drinks. She's not too sensitive to heat nor cold. So um, lots of information in different places there. Um, very nervous, drops what she holds in her hands if spoken to. And then there are a few um, interesting rubrics sensation of a closely fitted cap on the head and feels best in open air so you have bits and pieces of information from different uh, areas however the first step that you need to do whenever you have a case is sort it out analyze it classify it and get a sense of what exactly needs to be treated and what exactly is the core of this case the essence of this case so important don't just start dumping you know rubrics in your analysis and in this case we are going to use um, the Kenton approach here all right so I'll tell you how you analyze it so this is the totality that I've created always remember in Kenton approach you you make you divide the remedy the rubrics into symptoms into three parts the mental symptoms the physical generals and the pathological symptoms if you have them and with the mentals we have just this important thing about her nervousness dropping things awkwardly when she holds them in her hands and especially when she's spoken to so try to understand the state behind it it's a very nervous sort of you know lady awkward you know suddenly you know possibly anxious and fearful and drops things when someone speaks so it's always on the edge that you know in in a way and then you have this physical sensation of a closely fitted cap on her head peculiar and that's why you take it uh, she feels best in open air again a very important general which is mind body possibly and then you know what I took was ambithermal which means she's not too hot not too cold the the temperature doesn't really affect her uh, so this is important you can't use it as a rubric 
we have hot remedies and you have cold remedies so when you have somebody who's ambithermal i use it really precisely during my eliminating uh, process and i'll talk about that how i use this when i'm eliminating the drugs uh, the remedies in the final repertorization and then finally you have a pathology which is important that's what her chief complaint is she has multiple ulcers on her left leg and that's what she needs you to treat so remember with ken people have this misconception that he doesn't really use pathological symptoms it's all about the mind it's not it's a balance there and he's very strongly emphasized that your curative remedy needs to cover a pathology now pathological rubrics are not well represented in our repertories but when you have them use them and check if there is you know if if the remedy does cover if it covers it's great you have one more tick and one more confirmation if it doesn't there are other ways of understanding and making sure that it can work at that level so what i've done here is i've created three different sheets here based on those three groups of symptoms, the physical generals, the pathological symptoms, and the mentals. And there is a reason for that as I speak, because then you can actually look at the pros and cons and check remedies that cover by one, not by the other, and make sure that your remedy, you have a good understanding of what are the final remedies in your grade. So in the physical generals, I have taken um, the skull cap sensation, which is important in the head, right so with kent you take the location and you take the sensation whatever that is then in in the open air ameliorates i've taken the generals open air ameliorates so i'm just going to tell you how i've reached that so i've just taken open air ameliorates general and um i've looked for um the different rubrics there and i've just picked up the biggest one there uh with open air ameliorates and there you go i have this one here air open ml rates big one from the complete and that's what i took here and then i put in cap sensation in the head these are the two uh you know and then the skull cap sensation came up at the top in the head and that's the rubric i took right and then in the pathological uh you know rubrics i've just taken ulcers and legs so I want to make sure that it's a big rubric so i like it 107 uh, if it was like just 15 20 remedies i would have been a bit worried i would not have taken it for my repertorization but this is big so we'll take it and then finally i put in uh, the mentals and I, what i did was i put drops things because that's a very interesting aspect of you know the expression we don't know the feeling behind it as much but all we know that she drops things and when i put that um you know lots of awkwardness drops things comes up now in complete you have extremities drops things it is a type of mind and body sort of a nervous sensitivity here it's not just physical so Bonninghausen has a rubric where awkwardness drops things in the mind so i decided to check these two um and make sure and even fartak has mind awkwardness physical and mental awkwardness um but it's a very small it's just one remedy there so what i did was i tried to make sure that all these remedies 12 remedies here are covered in this big rubric here in um complete and they are so i just took that rubric here but this for me is a much more general rubric uh, rather than just an extremity rubric all right and then we do a multi-sheet repertorization and we make sure that we have a rubric coverage which means i want remedies that are covered by all these rubrics all these rubrics are covered by my remedies so there are about five uh, remedies that come up like cases argentum nitricum sulfur apis kali sulf all right so this is uh the first stage of any repertorization and this is how you work your case so it's quite simple in a way you just take the most peculiar things you divide your symptoms into three important sections and then you basically repertorize them all right now what is now important is how do you eliminate them and this is where you use the uh, the, the data which is different now i did not take cough dry because it was a very 
in a vague rubric it's not connected in any way to the main totality so i just left it alone but one one important thing he talks about is she's neither hot nor cold she she drinks both hot liquids and cold liquids she's not sensitive to hot or cold so what when we get that sort of information which is a sort of uh, you know she's not extremely chilly she's not extremely hot it gives us information and i've used this a lot of times you eliminate remedies which are too hot on one extreme okay so in this case lachesis is a very hot remedy sulfur is you know one of the hottest remedies we have in amatomedica and you have apis again a very hot remedy so i would actually eliminate these because they are not chilly remedies and this lady is both right so what it leaves us with is argentum nitricum and kali sulf so that's my way of looking at if there was a very chilly remedy here like you know calcarb or hippar sulf or brida carb or something here i would have eliminated even those remedies so extreme sort of temperature remedies we eliminate just take those we don't know about uh, whether they're not too hot not too cold and those are the remedies i kept here so i'm looking at argentum nitricum and kali sulf here now let's see what you do with these two remedies and this is when i go to remedy analysis and in remedy analysis what i did was kali sulf and argentum nitricum and i'm going to now look at the anxiety of these two remedies and contrast them because i want to look at the flavor of the anxiety of each of these remedies now argentum nitricum is a well-known polycrest kali sulf we don't really know it's a biochemic medicine i don't know whether there are lots of provings um there is a lot of proving information there so but it is interesting never miss out any small remedies that come up in your repertorization and in this case we do have a small remedy that's come up right at, you know at the top of the list so it's very important that you don't eliminate it all right and let's see now what happens here is when i'm looking at the anxiety of these two remedies um let's look at the anxiety of argentum nitricum there is a lot of anxiety with anger in the morning on rising okay so that's argentum it's a well-proved remedy so lots of anxiety remedies rubrics are coming up but kali sulf has anxiety in the evening we don't know the time in this case we have what we have the information so let's check and look at what happens here anxiety air open aggravates is argentum nitricum whereas in our case this lady is much better by open air and that's interesting and that's kali sulf so this is for us a very critical thing let's read kali sulf from the books and what books do i look at i look at my favorite here i look at fartek um Again, it's a Schusler salt and we have a lot of suppurations and sticking pains and cancer. So yes, um, you know the discharges are profuse and yellow. Um, so, and there is a cancerous state, so there is a destructive tendency there. Let's look at Kent. Again, Kent talks about it being a Schusler salt. And then look at that. Most symptoms aggravate in the evening However, the patient craves fresh and even cool air, ameliorated in open air and cool air. So there is a very interesting combination of heat and cold here, but that's what we have in our patient. This patient has to walk. So she's that sort of an anxious, nervous, you know, awkward, dropping thing, frightened lady who needs to walk in open air. And that makes her symptoms better. And that's what we've got here in this patient. So this is where um, Kali Sulf comes up very interestingly and quite strongly. All right. And this is where um, we check what Ken's done here. And he's given her Kali Sulf in a 10M and a 50M, two doses of each far apart, which cured the case. So I hope that helps you understand how this works. Um, you know, it's interesting. We don't know a lot about this lady, so we can't actually differentiate from the other mental aspects and the mental state, which is important when you can do it for your own cases. You can't do it for paper cases, but it's very important that some very important modalities like this can differentiate a remedy, the top remedy for you and bring up, you know, an interesting remedy that helps your case. So I hope this helps you understand how you work with the Kenton analysis 
what are the steps you take because don't miss out a step don't miss out the step of first going through and differentiating this information and picking up that key information you know the physical generals the pathologicals and make sure they all come up as a part of the picture and you know especially in this case when your pathology is also covered by kali self and once you've done it and once you've repertoired the elimination part is very important use hot or cold um, as a very it's important key eliminating symptom that i use in most cases but the other thing you can use to eliminate is also a pathological symptom in this case we took the pathology as a part of our rubric our totality but these are small things that you uh, you need to understand and sometimes you, you do a differential diagnosis and understand the top anxiety of both remedies because that was the key mental symptom there and um that was the key modality that really helped you seal it up so hope that helps and Thank you very much and I'll come back to you with a new tutorial next week but I look forward to your comments and your feedback below thank you